Some people think they're kind of creepy, and other people think that they're kind of cute. This is a Pet Pals TV special species report. Today, we're gonna find out about bats. Why are bats so important to like our environment and our ecosystem? So bats are one of our um, top night flying insect predators, and so like mosquitoes. Yeah. Like that. People don't usually like mosquitoes. Right. And uh, if we didn't have bats flying around um, and taking care of those populations, the population would be boom. Be mosquito land. Be mosquito city out there. Well, why do they hang upside down? They have adapted to be able to have that blood flowing in that way. Well, how do they have babies? I mean, and do they, you know, they roost up there? Are they, do they lay eggs? Do they, how do they do it? So they have live births um, and they have one pup per year on average. They oh, don't really? Have, okay. They don't have um, babies the way that a lot of smaller mammals do. And they mm -hmm. have large litter sizes. They only have one. Now, does the baby like hook on to them? Yeah, they'll do that. Are they like a that. marsupial? So no, they're not marsupials. Uh, they are um, from the order Chiroptera. So okay. they are um, a separate uh, species from marsupials. What are bats? Are they, are they birds? Are they are they reptiles? Are they mammals? What what exactly are they? Yeah, so bats are uh, mammals. Okay. They are, um, like I said, from the order Chiroptera. And if you break that word apart, Chiro means hand, and Optera means winged species. Okay. Um, so it fits perfectly if you were to look at their skeletal system. Um, they do have bones very like similar, a hand? very similar to oh, wow. um, humans. What other mammals can fly? Bats are the only mammals that can actually truly fly, whereas we have things like um, flying squirrels, squirrels here yeah. in Indiana, um, and they are just gliders, so they can't actually propel themselves. White nose syndrome? What, what is white nose syndrome? White nose syndrome is an invasive fungus that um, a caver went caving in another country and came back to the United States and used that gear, um, the oh, same no gear. Kidding. Yes, and so because of that, it made the fungus spread into that cave that they were at, and people and bats are able to take that fungus to a different cave. So um, it has caused a lot of bat populations to be decimated in many caves, Ooh. up to 90% um, and beyond. There are no some populations way. that have been decreased, yes. So, so what are some steps towards con uh, conservation? that we can do um, to help the bat population. So like I um, talked earlier, if you're a caver, uh, make sure you're following those decontamination protocols. Also, if you're a caver, leaving them alone over the winter is huge. Letting them hibernate, basically just letting them be is um, the biggest contribution that you know you and I could do for these bats. So as far as like helping out the bat population, the, there are things people can do by getting a bat box. Yes. Can you explain? a bat box and its function? A bat box offers a place for a bat to safely roost during the day. So when you're building a bat box, you wanna take into account an area that is open, but close to a tree line gotcha. is important and also close to a water source. That's our special species report for today. As you've learned, no matter if you think they're creepy or cute, bats are extremely important to our ecosystem and our environment. For Pet Pals TV, I'm Barney Wood.